Hello viewers, uh, in this session uh, we will continue uh, with the properties of complex numbers, uh, geometric, arithmetic uh, uh, etcetera. Okay. So, uh, firstly uh, last time we saw uh, the, the modulus of a complex number okay, and uh, we also uh, said what the argument of a complex number is. Uh, so, we will see a uh, couple of uh, uh, more properties of uh, uh, the modulus. Okay. So, last time recall we proved the triangle inequality uh, for uh, the modulus of complex number. So, it said that uh, the modulus of z 1 plus z 2 is less than or equal to modulus of z 1 plus the modulus of z 2. Okay. And um, it was an exercise to show that equality occurs um, only uh, when z 1 and z 2 lie on the same line passing through uh, the origin okay. and on the same side of the origin. Okay. So, uh, that is that is your triangle inequality. Okay. So, it can be generalized. Okay. So, uh, it can be applied to Uh, n numbers. So, maybe uh, well using induction one can show that using the principle of mathematical induction one can show that the modulus of uh, sum of n complex numbers like that is less than or equal to the, the uh, sum of the moduli. One can prove this using mathematical induction. Okay. So, exercise uh, proof this by using mathematical induction. Okay. And uh, it is convenient to record uh, one other form of triangle inequality. Okay. Um, it is as follows. So, uh, the modulus of so, uh, the modulus of uh, z 1 okay, uh, plus z 2 okay, uh, okay, or let me say modulus of z 1 uh, minus z 2. Okay. So, let us estimate this. Okay, uh, plus z 2 okay, which is equal to the modulus of z 1. Okay, so, I am adding and subtracting z 2 by the triangle inequality if I treat this as one number complex number and this has the second complex number by the triangle inequality this is less than or equal to the modulus of z 1 minus z 2 uh, plus the modulus of z 2. Okay. So, now using this and this on uh, two sides of uh, this inequality, what we get is that the modulus of z 1 uh, minus the modulus of z 2 is less than or equal to the modulus of uh, z 1 minus z 2. Okay. And this is uh, symmetric in z 1 and z 2 by that I mean uh, the modulus of uh, z 1. Okay. So, uh, the modulus of z 1 uh, minus z 2 okay, uh, is likewise greater than or equal to we can show uh, the modulus of z 2 minus the modulus of z 1. Okay. By uh, doing this using um, doing this using z 2 instead of z 1 okay. um, I mean uh, doing the same procedure here you will get modulus of z 2 minus z 1 but that is the same as uh, the modulus of z 1 minus z 2. Okay. And then, uh, so you get this uh, other uh, part. Okay. And so, uh, in conclusion the modulus of z 1 minus z 2 uh, is greater than or equal to, since it is greater than or equal to this and this, okay, uh, it is greater than or equal to the uh, absolute value of the modulus of z 1 minus the modulus of z 2. Okay. So, uh, this form of a triangle inequality is also uh, useful sometimes okay? uh, and I have 
uh, proved it here uh, for records. Okay, and uh, next, uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to uh, give a geometric interpretation uh, uh, using or a geometric uh, uh, locus uh, using the modulus. Okay. So, we know the geometric interpretation of modulus as the distance of the complex number z uh, from uh, the origin. Okay. So, uh, the modulus of z for example, here here is z let us say. Okay. So, the modulus of z uh, represents the length of this line segment uh, from 0 to z okay, that is uh, uh, that is your modulus okay. and um, <coughs> since uh, a circle is the set of all points uh, which are at a distance uh, which are at a constant distance from a fixed point. Okay. So, uh, we can say that a circle in complex plane has an equation uh, the modulus of uh, z minus a is equal to r. Okay. So, the modulus of z minus a measures the distance of z uh, from a. Okay. So, a is the fixed point, okay. a is the center okay. and modulus of z minus a is the distance of uh, a varying point z uh, from the fixed point a okay. and uh, r is we are uh, I mean this equation is telling you that this distance has to be constant r. Okay. So, r is uh, the radius of the circle. I will first uh, talk about the geometric. Okay. So, so, consider the geometric interpretation of multiplication of uh, of complex number multiplication okay and then uh, i'll come back to the straight line business okay so uh, if you have z1 equals r uh, times r1 times cosine theta 1 plus i sin theta 1 and z2 equals r2 cosine theta 2 plus i sin theta 2 for some uh, uh, r 1 theta 1 and r 2 theta 2. Okay. Let us assume for the time being z 1 not equal to 0, z 2 not equal to 0. So, that they have a polar representation like that. Okay. Then z 1 times z 2 we can work out is r 1 r 2 okay, times when you multiply this expression with this expression you get cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus i sin theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay. So, uh, this complex number z 1 times z 2 uh, has modulus r 1 times r 2 and an argument uh, for z 1 times z 2 is theta 1 plus theta 2, okay, where theta 1 is an argument of z 1 and theta 2 is an argument of z 2. Okay. So, so, the interpretation one can give is let us take a simplistic picture. So, suppose this is z 1 okay, and then uh, it opens with an angle theta 1 uh, from the positive x axis okay, and then suppose this is z 2 uh, and it opens with an angle theta 2 from the positive x axis. Okay. Then your z 1 times z 2 is going to have uh, a modulus. Okay. So, the length of this line segment is going to be modulus of z 1 times modulus of z 2 like we see here. So, it is going to have r 1 times r 2 as its modulus okay. and then it is going to open with the uh, x axis okay, uh, positive x axis with an angle theta 1 plus uh, theta 2. Okay. So, that is your uh, geometric interpretation of multiplication okay. and note that uh, argument of n argument of z 1 times z 2 okay, uh, is equal to uh, an argument of z 1 plus 
an argument of set. Okay, so if you uh, take a particular argument of Z2, Z1, any argument of Z1 for that matter, and any argument of Z2, recall there are many possible values of theta 1 and theta 2 that you can take because cosine and sine are 2 pi periodic. Okay, so uh, any choice of theta 1 and theta 2 will give you this equation. Okay, this multiplication rule dictates that equation, and so uh, you get this e this uh, equality. So the n argument n argument for uh, z1 times z2 is argument of z1 plus the argument of z2 or plus n argument of z2 next uh, what i want to do is uh, i want to look further into uh, multiplication okay so we saw that z1 times z2 is equal to uh, r1 r2 cosine theta1 plus theta2 uh, plus i sin theta1 plus theta2 Okay, where z1 is r1 cosine theta1 and z2 sorry r1 cosine theta1 plus i sin theta1 and z2 is r2 cosine theta2 plus i sin theta2. Okay, so uh, this we saw. So as a consequence, if you consider uh, z equals r cosine theta plus i sin theta, I'll drop the subscripts. Okay, then z squared is equal to r squared. Okay, cosine theta plus theta, so that gives me two theta plus i sine two theta. Okay, so uh, likewise uh, we can show using mathematical induction. Okay, so using uh, the principle of mathematical induction, I'll just say my. Okay, uh, we can show. z power n, n is a positive integer uh, is equal to r power n cosine n theta plus i sin n theta. The base case is clear, okay. uh, base case n equals 1. So, then z power 1 is equal to r power 1 cosine 1 times theta uh, which is uh, theta plus i times sin 1 times theta which is sin theta. Okay. So, this is true. Now, suppose z power k for some positive integer k greater than 1 is equal to r power k cosine k theta plus i sin k theta. Okay. Then uh, z power k plus 1 will be z power k times z Okay. And then by using this uh, supposition, which is the induction hypothesis, I can uh, say this is equal to r power k cosine k theta plus i sin k theta times z, z is once again r times cosine theta plus i sin theta. Okay. So, this is equal to r power k plus 1, I will club this r power k and r okay. and then multiply cosine k theta plus i sin k theta with cosine theta plus i sin theta. So, you get cosine k theta cosine theta okay. uh, i times i will give you a minus and then sin k theta sin theta that is the real part plus the imaginary part is i times um, cosine k theta uh, sin theta plus uh, sin k theta cosine theta. Okay. So, that gives you r power k plus 1 times of course, uh, this is cosine k plus 1 theta cosine k theta plus theta which is cosine uh, k plus 1 theta. Uh, plus i times this is sin k theta plus theta which is sin k plus 1 theta sin uh, k plus 1 times theta. Okay. So, uh, indeed you get z power k plus 1 is r power k plus 1 cosine k plus 1 theta plus i sin k plus 1 theta. Okay. So, uh, by the principle of mathematical induction, so by the principle of mathematical induction uh, z power n is r power n cosine n theta plus i sin n theta. Okay. So, uh, 
So, this statement is true for for positive integers okay, for any positive integer n. It is also true for um, negative integers and 0, okay, well 0 by convention z power 0 by convention is 1 okay, and so uh, that will tally with r power 0 uh, cosine uh, 0 plus i sin 0. Okay. So, this is by convention and so um, this is true for n equals 0. Okay. So, this statement that z power n is r power n cosine n theta plus i sin n theta okay, is true for n equals 0. Uh, by the way, of course, we need that this is uh, z is not 0, otherwise we do not have an arg we do not have the argument or an argument for uh, z defined. Okay. So, we need uh, all this is true only in the case of z not equal to 0. Okay. Uh, likewise, we do not define 0 power 0, okay. it is undefined and uh, z power minus 1 is, uh, is indeed well it is 1 by z which is uh, 1 by r times cosine theta plus i sin theta okay. and mul by multiplying and dividing by cosine theta minus i sin theta, we get <coughs> we get uh, r in the denominator. Okay. So, cosine theta plus i sin theta times cosine theta minus i sin theta gives you cosine squared plus i uh, plus sin squared. So, that is times 1. Okay. So, this can be written as 1 by r which is r power minus 1 times cosine minus theta plus i sin minus theta. So, it is true that um, z power minus 1 likewise is r power minus 1 times cosine minus 1 theta plus i sin minus 1 times theta. Okay. So, uh, now either by using induction okay, or by using what was already proved, we can show that z power uh, minus n n positive integer okay uh, z power minus n is r power minus n times uh, cosine uh, minus n theta plus i sin minus n theta okay so you can do this directly uh, by using the fact that already this is true for positive integers. Okay. So, this is true for positive integers. Okay. So, z power minus n is z power n power minus 1 okay. uh, and then uh, by using this uh, loss of exponents which uh, will work okay. and then this is equal to 1 by z power n etcetera. Okay. So, this is uh, this gives you uh, r power minus n uh, I mean if you do what we have done already here. Okay you have to use the de Moore's formula first okay, uh, or sorry you have to use the fact that z power n is r power n cosine n theta plus i sin n theta. Okay. This is what we have done already n is a positive integer okay. and then write this as 1 by r power n which is r power minus n r power minus n and then multiply and divide by cosine n theta minus i sin n theta to to get cosine minus n theta plus i times sin minus n theta. The denominator will give you cosine squared n theta plus i sin plus sin squared n theta which will give you 1. Okay. So, z power minus n will also be this. Okay. So, it is true that z power n is r power n cosine n theta plus i sin n theta for all integers n. Okay, for any integer n okay. and this is referred to as a de Moore's formula. Okay. So, all right. So, uh, de Moore's formula can be put to use uh, uh, at least in the following way. Here is an example. 
Okay. So, uh, find uh, the fourth roots of z equals minus 3. Okay. So, consider this example z equals uh, 3 cosine pi plus i sin pi. Okay. So, we can write uh, if we take the argument of z to be pi, okay, we can write uh, z like that 3 times cosine pi plus i sin pi. Okay. So, uh, de Moore's formula suggests that if you want, uh, okay, if you want, if you say w equals z power 1 by 4, you want the fourth root, okay, w power 4 is equal to z. Okay. So, w power 4, you, you imagine w in the place of z here. Okay. So, if w is if w is taken to be 3 power 1 by 4 times cosine pi by 4 plus i sin pi by 4, okay, then definitely then uh, by using de Moore's formula, we get uh, we get w power 4 is 3 power 1 by 4 power 4, which is 3 times uh, cosine pi plus i sin pi, okay, uh, which is your minus 3, okay, which is your z. So, definitely this value of w will work, but is this all? Okay. Well, the answer is uh, we are missing out uh, on other values of uh, other possible values of w by considering one particular argument for uh, z. Okay. We can do better by considering uh, a general argument for z. Okay. So, if we consider z to be 3 times cosine 2 k pi plus pi plus i times sin 2 k pi plus pi, which it is because sin and cosine are uh, 2 pi periodic, okay. k belongs to uh, integers. Okay. Then, um, by uh, doing the same, what we can say is that uh, w equals 3 power 1 by 4 uh, times cosine 2 k pi plus pi, now divided by 4 plus i times sin 2 k pi plus pi divided by 4 is such that w power 4 now gives you z. Okay. It, it gives you uh, that z. Okay. And so, then now the question is how many different values does w give? Uh, <coughs> notice that now this 2 k pi has been divided by uh, 4. Okay. So, uh, you get uh, for example, when k is uh, k is uh, 1, okay, you get 2 pi by 4 pi by 2 plus pi by 4. Okay. So, uh, for, for k equals 0, 1, 2 and 3, we notice that we get different values of w. Okay. So, let me be slower. So, maybe I will say w is 3 now 3 by 3 power 1 by 4 times cosine uh, k pi by 4 plus pi by 4 sorry k pi by 2 plus pi by 4 plus i sin k pi by 2 plus pi by 4 where uh, k belongs to integers. Okay. Now, notice that uh, if Okay, uh, values of k equals 0 and k equals let us say uh, 4 okay, give the same w. That is because when you substitute 4 in there, you get 4 pi by 2 which is 2 pi uh, and then uh, I mean k pi by 2 is equal to uh, 
4 pi by 2 which is 2 pi and cosine and sine are 2 pi periodic. So, cosine uh, k pi by 2 plus pi by 4 will be cosine 2 pi plus pi by 4 which will once again give you uh, cosine pi by 4. Okay. So, k equals 0 gives you uh, uh, the, the this part gives you uh, 0 plus pi by 4 okay. and then for k equals 4 you get cosine 2 pi plus pi by 4 etcetera and these are equal. Okay. Likewise, uh, sin okay, uh, gives you same values when k equals 0 and k equals 4. Okay. So, you get the same w as a result. Okay. Uh, so, for k equals 0, 1, 2 and 3, okay, we get all the distinct values, because uh, k equals 1 and k equals 5, k equals 2 and k equals uh, 6 etcetera, they will all give you the same uh, values for w. Okay. So, um, pair wise uh, for k equals 0, 1, 2, 3, we get uh, we get all the possible values, all the different possible values of w. Okay. Uh, so, when we work it out, well, when we substitute and see what the values are, uh, we get W equals, uh, let us say, um, 3 power 1 by 4 times uh, plus or minus 1 by root 2 plus or minus i by root 2. Okay. So, all the possible combinations 1 by root 2 minus i by root 2, 1 by root 2 plus i by root 2, etcetera. Okay. So, minus 1 by root 2 plus i by root 2 and uh, minus 1 by root 2 minus i by root 2. Okay. So, these are different possible values of uh, uh, w, okay, which give you w power 4 is equal to z minus 3. Okay. So, those are the fourth roots of, uh, of uh, minus 3. Okay. So, de Moore's formula can be uh, used to uh, solve this example okay, or to find nth roots uh, of a certain complex number in general. Okay. So, uh, next uh, we are going to need the uh, notion of uh, the complex plane uh, with the point at infinity. Okay. So, so far we have this uh, complex plane okay. and then uh, what we can do is we can add one point at infinity. Okay. And uh, this is to discuss, uh, this will be useful, this gadget will be useful uh, to discuss continuity of certain functions as, uh, as these functions tend to 0, uh, tend to infinity. Okay. So, um, and in the discussion for Mobius transformations for example. Okay. So, uh, but we are, we are going to give this C union infinity, this set C union infinity a concrete uh, uh, picture. Okay. So, what we are going to do is, um, we will consider uh, the complex plane as contained in R 3. Okay. So, consider, I will write here. Okay. So, consider uh, C as contained in R 3. Okay. Uh, triples of uh, real numbers okay, in the form x plus i y okay, or which is now uh, in the plane form it is x comma y. Okay. It is contained in R 3 in the form x comma y comma 0. Okay. This is a point in the x y plane in R 3. Okay. So, here is the plane x y plane in R 3 and we have this z axis coming out. Okay. So, this is the x axis. Y axis. Okay. So, uh, what you can do is now you consider uh, the unit sphere. Okay. So, okay. so uh, consider the unit sphere uh, S equals set of all x, y, z such that uh, x squared plus y squared plus uh, 
plus z squared is equal to 1. Okay. So, this set intersects the x y plane in the unit circle. Okay. So, um, when z equals 0, okay, this equation is just x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Okay. So, that is the unit circle in the complex plane. Okay, and then um, complex plane contained in R three. Okay, now uh, what you can do is you can you can take any point in the complex plane here, which is sit now sitting in R three. Okay, and uh, join it to the north pole of the sphere by a straight line. Okay, and that straight line hits the uh, unit sphere. Uh, s at some point. Okay. And you notice that uh, if you take any complex number uh, on the x y plane okay, corresponding to it, there is a unique point on this uh, sphere okay, um, by joining okay, okay, which is obtained by joining the uh, number on the complex plane uh, to this point at uh, this north pole which is the point 0 comma 0 comma 1. Okay. So, uh, we can we can find out what that point of intersection of that line is. Okay. Uh, so, uh, to do that you consider uh, t times uh, 0 0 1 okay, plus 1 minus t times uh, x comma y comma 0. Okay. So, this is the point z in the complex plane. Okay, and then this is the point uh, which is the north pole. Okay, the north pole. Okay, and so uh, this this t times 0, 0, 1 plus one minus t times x y zero when t is allowed to be uh, any real number. Okay, gives you a straight line connecting 0, 0, 1 and uh, x y zero. Okay, we know how to construct uh, equations uh, of lines in uh, in R 3. Okay. So, t times a point plus 1 minus t times another point will give you a, a line passing through these two points. Okay. So, uh, so, this is um, a point in R 3, let us call that capital Z. Okay. So, capital Z equals this um, okay, is a straight line okay, in R 3 connecting 0 0 1 to a complex uh, number uh, to the complex number x y 0. Okay. Now, the complex numbers are uh, on the x y plane. Okay. So, now the point of intersection of this line we can calculate with uh, the sphere okay, uh, is obtained by well s is set of all points I already wrote it here. So, s is the set of all points such that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1. Let us look at the x y z coordinates of this capital Z. Capital Z let me rewrite that as it is uh, t plus 1 minus t times x. Okay. So, that will give me uh, x sorry t times 0. So, that gives me 1 minus t times x and then t times 0 times 1 plus 1 minus t times y that gives me 1 minus t times y likewise okay and t times 1 plus 1 minus t times uh, 0 gives me t okay so now that's your point z and uh, when we put it on the unit sphere, we get 1 minus t squared x squared plus 1 minus t squared y squared plus t squared is equal to 1. Okay. But x squared plus y squared is the modulus of a complex number z. Okay. So, if we call this number z belongs to c, we already called this z belongs to c. Okay. So, this is 1 minus t squared modulus of z squared plus t squared is equal to 1. Okay. Now, let us solve for t. Okay. So, we get 1 minus t squared is equal to 
1 minus t whole square modulus of z square. Okay. So, um, t from here we can um, solve for t. Well, notice that t does not equal 1, because when t is equal to 1, when you substitute t equals 1 in here, okay, you get uh, 0 0 1. Okay. So, there is no uh, well there is no complex number okay, uh, which intersects this sphere in this point 0 0 1 itself. Okay. After all uh, you are you are connecting the complex number to this point 0 0 1. Okay. So, that uh, will not intersect uh, the sphere in 0 0 1 itself. Okay. So, uh, t can t will not be 1, okay, because since this corresponds to the point 0 0 1. Okay. So, you can divide by 1 minus t squared for example, okay. and then if we solve this for t, okay, uh, we can solve this for t, uh, well let us do it. Okay. So, 1 minus t squared is uh, modulus of z squared plus t squared modulus of z squared uh, minus 2 t modulus of z squared. Okay. So, this gives you uh, t squared times modulus of z squared plus 1 uh, plus minus 2 t times modulus of z squared uh, plus modulus of z squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay. And so, <coughs> excuse me. So, uh, t then is uh, okay, by using the uh, quadratic formula, okay, what you can get is uh, t is modulus of z squared minus 1 by modulus of z squared plus 1. So, substituting t in this point capital Z, uh, we get we get the following uh, capital Z is equal to uh, 2 x by modulus of z squared plus 1 comma uh, 2 y by modulus of z squared uh, plus 1 comma modulus of z squared minus 1 by modulus of z squared plus 1. Okay. And if we want to write this completely in terms of the complex number z, okay, we'll remove the appearance of x. Okay, so this is z plus uh, z bar by modulus of z squared plus one. Okay, so that represents the conjugate. Recall, okay, uh, z bar represents the conjugate of z, and then minus i times z minus z bar by uh, modulus of z squared plus one. Okay, and then uh, this is modulus of z squared minus 1 by modulus of z squared plus 1. Okay. So, that is your point of intersection of the line joining the north pole uh, and uh, a point z uh, on the complex plane okay, with the uh, unit sphere. Okay. So, that is the point z. Okay. And then uh, Okay. So, if we if we wish to find okay, if we are given a point okay, the opposite is if we are given a point capital Z okay, on uh, on the sphere on S okay, then uh, then we can find the point z on the complex plane, okay, then uh, z on c can be found. Recall what we are doing is we are drawing a straight line connecting 0 0 1 okay, and the point capital Z okay, uh, and that gives you uh, and when you project it onto the complex plane, uh, it gives you a point of intersection with the complex plane okay, and um, we can calculate that. Uh, so, that can be found uh, we get z equals um, x 1 plus i x 2 by 1 minus x 3, where capital Z is assumed to be x 1 x 2 x 3. Okay. Once again uh, x 3 uh, is 
okay, is not 1. Okay, x 3 is not 1, because x 3 equals 1 will correspond to uh, the north pole. So, I should say that if we are given a point z on s uh, not equal to 0 0 1, okay, then we can find z on the complex plane. Okay. So, by this kind of association okay, corresponding to each point on the sphere. Okay, there is a point on the complex plane and corresponding to each point on the complex plane, there is a uh, point on the sphere. Okay. So, there is a one to one correspondence between uh, points on the sphere and uh, the complex plane. We can we actually have the equations for them okay. and then uh, these points uh, the one to one correspondence is given by drawing geometrically drawing a straight line passing through the north pole uh, and the point on the uh, on the complex plane. Okay, or uh, in the other direction by the uh, by joining the, uh, the north pole and any other point on the uh, on the sphere, okay, on the sphere, uh, which will be projected onto the complex plane and uh, uh, to get the complex number. Okay, so in this way, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence. But uh, notice here that we have accounted for all the points on the sphere except the north pole. Okay, and uh, and let us look at the picture once again okay and as you move farther away in the complex plane okay you are moving higher up on this sphere the point of intersection of the line joining that farther away point on the complex plane and the north pole will be higher up here okay so and so you keep approaching the north pole but you never reach the north pole by these uh, lines which are intersecting the sphere Okay. So, in that sense uh, when you move far away uh, you are getting closer to the north pole in that sense the north pole represents the point at infinity. Okay. So, you call you, you, you think of uh, the point at infinity as uh, the north pole okay. and then uh, so that is the correspondence of points um, in C union infinity with the points in S. Points in C go to points in S which are anything but the north pole okay, by that straight line uh, connecting uh, north pole and the complex number okay, and the point infinity itself goes to the north pole. Okay, so, that is the correspondence and uh, this uh, sphere is often called uh, the Riemann sphere. Okay, when we put uh, uh, some distance also on this. Okay, so, we can put a distance on uh, okay, can give uh, a distance function on C union infinity. Okay, we can find the distance between any two numbers z and z prime in C union infinity. Okay. So, this is defined as define this as uh, the distance between okay, so actually it is a split definition. Okay. So, define this to be uh, the distance between the corresponding point z and z prime on the sphere okay, in R 3 okay, distance in R 3, when z and z prime not equal to infinity. Okay. We are defining distance function for C union infinity. Okay. So, forget infinity for the time being if you take any two uh, complex numbers okay, the, the new distance on the uh, Okay, in C union infinity is defined to be uh, the distance between the corresponding points z and z prime uh, in R 3. Okay. And then if you have infinity okay, in picture, okay, so then you can also uh, define distance. What you do is uh, you define this to be 2 by 1 plus modulus of z square. Okay. Uh, power half if z prime is equal to infinity. Okay, if z prime is infinity then uh, uh, this is the thing okay. and if z is infinity of course, you have 2 by 1 plus z prime uh, modulus of z prime squared power half 
is raised to power half. Okay, so uh, so let me rewrite this as the distance between z and z prime is uh, x one. Okay, so in terms of x one, x two, x three representing z and x one prime, x two prime, x three prime representing z one, z prime, we have uh, x one minus x one prime square plus x 2 minus x 2 prime squared of course, that is the distance in r 3 plus x 3 minus x 3 prime squared power half okay. and then this is equal to uh, 2 by 1 plus mod z squared uh, power half okay, uh, if z prime is equal to infinity if z or z prime not equal to infinity. Okay. So, that way we can measure uh, the distance between any two points, the, the only new point is infinity, but actually we, we measure distances using the distance in R 3. Okay. And uh, okay, so, uh, this correspondence, okay, this, this structure on C union infinity okay, is often called uh, the Riemann sphere structure okay. and then uh, this correspondence along with this distance okay, is called stereographic projection. Okay. So, using the stereographic projection, okay, uh, we, uh, we have uh, this point at infinity okay, uh, being added to this, uh, uh, this complex plane. Okay. And then in C union infinity, we have uh, arithmetic as well. Okay. So, uh, a plus infinity is equal to infinity for a belongs to C okay. and then um, a times infinity is uh, uh, infinity a belongs to C a by okay, a not equal to 0. Okay, uh, we do not define 0 times infinity okay. and then uh, 1 by infinity is equal to 0 okay. uh, and then or a by infinity is equal to 0 a belongs to C and then uh, 1 by 0 or a by 0 a belongs to C is infinity. Okay. So, we have this additional arithmetic Okay. And then, uh, okay. so this is a discussion about the uh, Riemann sphere. So, uh, we have added a point at infinity in addition to the complex uh, uh, numbers okay. and then there is a distance measuring gadget as well. So, uh, we will put this to use when we study uh, Mobius transformations.